Hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary Grigsby's War in the East. I'm um, here with a little bit of an update. So, while I was playing this and I was doing turn three, uh, not only did I have some problem with my recording, so the audio was completely gone, um, but I also wanted to give a bit of an update. So, I did start this game on challenging, which means the AI can teleport, because I really wanted to see what would happen. And I think the thing that was most notable is that basically you cannot hold the Kursk pocket by any means, because the AI teleports troops in and then somewhere else. Um, Basically, because of that, the Germans cannot have a continuous line that is strong enough to to hold that pocket, basically. Um, there is, at least for my part, no way of holding this in any area. And because the Soviets can muster forces of immense proportions anywhere... Um, yeah, not, not that one, but basically they just teleport like uh, over 80,000 troops into these locations and they just start smacking around. And um, basically th there is no way of holding that uh, through any means, really. Um, which leads to a problem because uh, it... It basically means that I would have to abandon this Kursk offensive and then basically just go into defensive then uh, afterwards. So, with all the teleporting and stuff in question, so they also decided to get a couple of uh, guards units up here. Um, either way... Uh, given all this teleport madness, I'm gonna say and give this one up as a failure. Um, look, uh, even I get beaten sometimes, and uh, just like my first attempt at the game on challenging, uh, where I, I ultimately gave up in 1941 because... I was unable to reach the uh, original German Ghost Bell long shot, so I remember falling short of Orel, falling short of Kursk, falling short of... I don't even know if I got to Kharkov, I don't think I did. Um, on my first playthrough, uh, didn't get anywhere close to, to Moscow and such either. But um, I'm gonna go and write this one off as a failure. Um, you know, I, I, I've had people say like, oh, he just uh, replays until he gets it, it right or whatever, right? Just keep reloading or whatever until supposedly I get the outcome that I want. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's not the case. Um, so, like I said, sometimes something like this happens, you know, uh, that's just what it is, and uh, I'm fair to uh, to admit that uh, this endeavor was ultimately a failure. So I could technically save these guys at least for a while, and then you know try to retreat with some dignity. Um, I would have to do that everywhere. So basically, that's how it would be looking like. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to go to my normal game now because what I've been doing in order to continue at least the Cursed series is um, to go back and replay the first two turns on a normal campaign. Um, so where the AI cannot uh, teleport basically. And uh, I will run you through how that's going which is wildly different from how this how, how it would play out in uh, in this one. So. I will uh, guide you through it, so I'll meet you in my normal playthrough on, on turn three, actually. Alright, so I'm back. Um, as you might have seen from my gameplay without uh, commentary for the first two turns of this normal campaign, um, there are some uh, significant differences. So, 
First of all, the situation report and the Italian campaigns are pretty much the same. The Allies land in Sicily and, um, you know, they are, they're bombing. Um, what is different in my normal campaign compared to the um, challenging campaign? Um, one thing is, is that the Soviets have not seen fit to put a couple of guards corps over in here. Um, so that's one thing. I can also go after the battles. There are slightly less battles. It also seems like the AI is um, airlifting Leningrad at the moment. Which is exactly why I want to have planes here. Is Basically, I want to try and prevent them from continuously air transporting freight. Which will be difficult. Uh, I'll probably send some planes there, or extra planes there after Kursk. Um, so they did attack here, but then it got repulsed for the moment. Either way, we're still trying to push up towards Siestroy. It's not yet blocked off but it's still going to be an exceptionally hard endeavor okay so as it is um the soviets haven't moved near veliki luki yet whereas i believe that in the other campaign they already started pushing and then i started pushing back um the ai has, has the tendency to go and retreat in certain places um which is also what they are doing here but the thing is, I can't really go too far. As you can obviously see that the AI is still very aggressive along this axis here. Where they're um, still breaking through over in this direction, down here. Um, so, I retook Kirov, but then they blasted through there again. The Soviets are basically still at advancing along the entire Orel front towards Orel and Bryansk. Um, basically, on this campaign, the Soviets have not been able to um, teleport their additional forces over to the Kursk area fast enough. They still have their reserves here, a strategic reserve, I guess, but um, they have been able to get here quickly enough with those additional forces to reopen the pocket every single turn. So, um, what that means is basically I did hold the pocket on turn two this time, um, simply because they can't get there fast enough in reality, uh, without teleporting that is. The Soviets have started to uh, push the front line towards Kharkov, so they, they are actually attacking in this area and they've repulsed this here. Uh, tiny unit with their 80k units this uh, insane stack that they have there makes sense they didn't cross here yet but they've of course crossed there um so i'm in a better position than i was before but it doesn't seem on normal at least so far yet that the ai is that much less um interested in um, attacking so I'm going to continue with my normal campaign instead of the challenging campaign um, the biggest reason why I'm doing this is because it makes things a li little bit more exciting I think the ability to potentially still perform operational maneuvers even you even if you can't pull off very large strategic maneuvers I think makes this campaign more interesting than a campaign where I just straight up only defend uh, or only retreat three hexes every single turn. Um, so I, I'm going to keep it at this for now because I, I think it makes it a bit more interesting to see what would happen if Kursk was somewhat successfully uh, pulled off instead of just a failure at Kursk like historically and then retreating, retreating, retreating. Um, so I'm going to keep it at this, and like I said, I'll consider the other game as uh, a failure. I mean, even I lose sometimes. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> yeah. Either way, um, what that means besides is um, the... I'll quickly go over the other places. I've distributed my forces a little bit, not completely differently, but... 
Um, at Balkans, apparently, why these guys are going here is beyond me. Not really sh I guess they already were supposed to go there. Um, either which way, I can probably phase them out again. Just eight, yeah. Italy has 127, 125, 138, so they're looking okay for now. The Soviet garrison is at 98. I actually put a bit too much out of it, apparently, which might cause problems. So I'll have to put something back. Um, Axis reserves is... Uh, Like this now. Then Finland, I believe I'm also running. No, I'm at 101. All right, that's okay. Uh, not too bad. Then Norway, I cannot take out any more forces. And yeah, we've, we've already seen this. So um, yeah, let's get started. Basically, I need to only change my recon again i want to see where the strategic reserve is for the soviets actually that probably runs fine then if because i want to know here and what's over here let's just run these i forgot to change some generals last turn uh so <laughs> that's what it is either way i'll be hoping to break up some of that kursk pocket to make things a bit easier there Get a couple of surrenders. Uh, that would be nice. The first few turns take the least time. Because you can only uh, deal with such a, a small part of the front. And we're expanding. As it is. I have to say, it always sucks giving up a campaign. But... Uh, Due to my limited time, I'm not interested in doing a 100 uh, turn LP for uh, necessary immediately a losing game. So, um, there's that. Either way, I started blasting. And they retreated. Alright. Some surrenders. Finally, some good news. Hmm. Might as well go for the surrender on them. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I, I can't actually join them together, but I'll take this city. Mm, this is a level 3, so... I'll use all of these. I know they're likely to get a pretty low combat value, but underestimating the Soviets is generally a, a bad idea, almost always. Can't undo that. Great. Well, I can still get them together here, I suppose. Uh, that's okay. I'd rather have my units as one entire unit instead of separated. Nice. Didn't think they'd made kit, but this is a bit trickier. Yeah, but so. Okay, let's uh, go at it from this side. Um, I'll not use the 167th. I think these guys can make it. Yeah. Uh, 
That's probably not to... Oh, this is to six. Nice. All right, I will do a double attack. No, actually, I'll take... I'll take these two, so... Hmm. They can actually do two heavy attacks as well. Or not? No. Well. No, oh, I misread those. Um, hmm. This is also tricky here. No. I don't like that I'm losing these bombers, though. Um... I said also I'd like to um, get the Kursk. Which I should probably just do with these. Probably cannot break those, so I might um, better focus on these units. And these. Because I still think I can take them, probably. Pity. That is a pity. Um. Okay, well, like I said, I'm actually gonna... these into Kursk because that will liberate them. I'll have to attack with units like Totenkopf to get a... Ah, jeez, what? Wow. Get things a bit in order around here. Unexpected. I'm actually gonna attack with guys like this too. I need to get that pocket cleared quickly, and I don't have much time actually, even now. So I will use units like that in order to get uh, try and get rid of them. And I will try to make a, another pocket here. To encircle those guys. Mm. Nice, okay. I'm gonna use Leibstandard, uh, maybe. Let's start with those. And them. And they'll stay there. Hmm.
the reason why I want to clear all that stuff so badly is because the enemy still has an overwhelming force even around this area they can break any pocket quite quickly and I really need to defeat those units in order to gain more uh, <clears throat> operational freedom basically Especially with these guys coming in on an offensive towards Orel and down here. Uh, I need this this done quickly to make sure that I can keep going. Um, I cannot get across. I can try a new attack. really high okay this is probably trickier no it's not that bad okay Even if they only retreat, still gives me a bit more space around here. And with some of them surrendering, that's uh, fine too. It's a large unit. I definitely need to clear in this pocket. This is too powerful to take down like that. I'm actually going to counter-attack here which costs me a lot but they have a lot of tanks I need to keep this open for long enough that uh, I can clear the enemy pocket here on reserve and it should be I mean half of that pocket is gone so There's at least uh, some benefit in it. Okay. Moving the 167th in there allows me to move across Deutschland a bit more freely. I currently have two divisions here. This is the guard's rival division. I'd rather actually take those. The fact, I'm quite sure they can move in there, but got the 113th as a reinforcement. I actually don't mind them moving into that hex, but I do move mind them moving in here. Okay. I will also retreat in this area. Let's start with this. Um, you're going in there. Should have removed those planes from uh, Chuguyev. But you can join together and want to move the 113th in there and 
And then I have the 1st Slovakian Mobile Division as a reserve. Um, I'm going to pull back from this. Let's see how many units I have for treating. And we'll start with... Just uh, doing this and you can uh, go back. How do you do that again? There is a back to HQ. Uh, Oh, yeah, here. Return to HQ. Oop. Um, actually, I don't, I don't need to do this. Okay, so I have these guys along that entire line and the 42nd core. That's what you're going to be under. Under Franz Mattenklot, he has six infantry. I actually um, need to switch up some stuff because um, I forgot to talk about this. So what I did is I have Eric von Manstein under the OKH. And that means that for army group south it's now kurt zeitzler he needs to be replaced with something better and <clears throat> Take von Runstead or Rendulik. Ferdinand Schöner is currently under the 19th Mountain Corps. But due to his high morale initiative, admin Mac and Inf. I'm going to send him to be part of Arm Group South. The only thing is, is that I want to switch units from Army Group South because uh, and Army Group A. So currently Army Group South has 1st Panzer, Kempf and 3rd Romanian. But I actually want to give them those uh, lower things and Army Group A will be in, this, in the middle. Um, the reason for that is I had Ewald von Kleist as Army Group A. I actually want him to uh, take the, the leftover things. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Either way, Franz Mattenklot is also not very good, so I also want to switch him up. Mm, do I have a, a mechanized HQ anyway here? Or at least a... Uh, I don't think I do. I, I think I gave it the 4th Panzer. Erhard Raus is a lot better, so let's actually put these guys under Erhard Raus, which is the 11th core. And I have those guys on reserve over here in the hopes that uh, crossing will be a difficult barrier for them to overcome. Which it won't be, but that doesn't matter. Not quite sure why I can't switch that, but... Uh Oh, 
at the leftover HQ, so I'll move them. Any which way, it's probably best to take Prokhorovka with Gross Deutschland. This is still a, a bit of a weak spot. If I can get in there, that'd be great. I really want to reinforce all of those areas uh, quite a bit here. I don't want them to break through any of these. Even now. Um, even though they still might. But my hope is that I've at least beaten them enough that uh, they won't uh, break the pocket. At this conjunction. All right, let, let's go further down. So we have this uh, field training division. One thing I want to do though is I want to beat this unit to make it a bit harder for them to cross in this area. I'll lose quite a few units too, but it's a bit, pretty decent attack actually. I'll, I'll take those odds. And after that. Move you in there. Field training division here, split them up and get one part over in here. Uh, you in here and one part here. I'll have to unfortunately put them under the 57th Panzer Corps as I have nothing else currently. could actually do it because all the other ones are frozen um, right. yeah actually it, it's probably better to do it like this either way I still don't have enough forces throughout this entire area but um, any spare division can help me strengthen first panzer army here a bit it's a good idea. Um, it's actually... He's also pretty bad. Not a good infantry general, which is what I need. So Mackinson is 67777. And you are... 76677. Seven. So it, it, it's not that big of a difference, but it does make a difference for under which army they are. Let's put you under the Kampf Detachment Army. Um, because it just kind of means that uh, we can. I'll put more units under the first Panzer army uh, afterwards, which I also will do. I've gotten some reinforcements down here. First Panzer, 100th Jaeger. I'll start with uh, railing first Panzer over to first Panzer army. Even though oh, it got sent to the Russian front in October, huh? Fighting on the southern sector, so it's fine if I send it to first answer. It's somewhat historically accurate, I suppose. Oh, really? Didn't know that I had that, but to be honest, uh, I can't send it. I 
Uh, let's see what comes into the reserve anyway. Um, the other unit is the 100th Jaeger, which is in need of reorganizing first. I'll, um, I'll send it to Kiev on refit. I can't get it off the train. Well, next turn then. All right. Um, that's pretty much all I can do down there. The way it works is I set up the Romanians in the exact same way I did before, but uh, how is all of this? I have a lot of these in the army currently. Whereas the only unit that can do anything currently is the Mountain Romanian Corps. Well, we'll soon get control of the Cavalry Romanian Corps and apparently the 3rd Romanian Mountain Division. Um, but we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, let's go into the north. This, uh, yeah, pretty tricky, but I did make it with nearly ten to one odds. a lot of units there too okay well it was somewhat worth of a try I guess mm. I think I can actually pull the 170th away from this hex I think I want it here. I don't like this Luftwaffe field division. It's too weak for my tastes. So what I'm going to do here... Yes, I'm going to uh, put it in reserve here. Um, I think this looks a bit better, and if they're going to attack, I'd much, much rather have it like this. I don't like this second Slovakian motorized here either. But I currently don't have anything to replace it, and I don't want to move any units from this because these three are likely to attack. Can't do anything here. Mm. As bad as that looks, I kind of want to keep it like that. I'm going to pull back here, though. And... Give up this one piece. 